hi guys hope you all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video I'm going to talk about Microsoft zero trust security for endpoints that means what are the best security practices that you can apply to make sure all the endpoints are secured and protected and you are not allowing access on any untrusted device now before I go ahead and talk about the security for endpoints in a nutshell Let's take a step back and recall the principles that we had for zero trust security. The first one is verify explicitly, wherein you have to make sure that each and every request is getting authorized. Then the concept of least privilege and assume breach strategies. Now, once you add these three principles with the guidelines and the policies for your enterprise and use the right technology, you can actually achieve a state which is called zero trust security. Now let's begin with understanding the zero trust security for endpoints. The very first thing that you have to keep in mind is scope. That means you are making sure that you are catering all the devices irrespective of their type that means whether it's a tablet or a PC or a laptop Mac or a mobile device the next thing is you have to make sure that you are taking care of both the categories whether a device is a corporate owned device or it is a personal device now things will get a little more complicated when you will start implementing or when you will start creating policies because it's not only about the type of device and the category what you also have to make sure is that you are covering all the platforms right now think about like this with this enormous varieties of different operating systems different platforms different hardware configurations at times it is really tedious to have a very organized security policies in place and making sure everything is protected now to get it more simplified or to make it more simple for you guys to understand you can actually break the entire configuration into three different categories the first one is device compliance which is basically a policy to go ahead and check whether the device's configuration or whether the device health state falls under the category of being compliant for your enterprise or not the next thing is device configuration itself that means what kind of configuration should exist on a particular device whether there should be any change or not likewise you can actually have admin templates deployed from endpoint manager itself right this is core configuration and the third category is endpoint protection which is moreover related to EPP or EDR capabilities right now think about like this before you go ahead and manage any device right the first thing that you need is device object that means the device identity itself so likewise when you join a machine to your AD right there is a computer object getting created in the AD and that computer object is used to map all the policies now the same concept has to be applied when you are using cloud native solutions right now when I say cloud native solutions and when we talk about typically for Microsoft it's Azure AD, Endpoint Manager, and Windows Defender for Endpoints. Now, Microsoft Defender for Endpoints is basically the new name for Windows Defender ATP, right? But what we have to understand that when you Azure AD join your device, then there is a device object which gets created in Azure AD. Similarly, when that object gets onboarded to Intune, there is a dedicated object in Endpoint Manager portal itself, but both the objects are connected. Now, this is something which I have covered in a lot more detail already. The same process happens when you onboard your device to Windows Defender ATP or Microsoft Defender for Endpoints right so what I'm trying to explain here that to have a centralized management of your devices make sure all the devices that you have that you are going to manage are onboarded to all these three entities the first one will 
specifically help you to have device identity on behalf of which you will be defining conditional access policies. The other one, which is the MEM, the Endpoint Manager Console, will help you to have device compliance, device configuration, security patching in place. And the other one, the last one, which is Microsoft Defender for Endpoints, will help you to have Defender AV or EDR or EPP capabilities, right? Now let's proceed in terms of understanding the key rules for making sure all the devices and endpoints are secured with zero trust model. Now the first principle or the first key rule itself says zero trust security policies are centrally enforced through the cloud and cover device configuration, app protection, device compliance, endpoint security, and risk posture. Now, if you relate this rule with the image that we have seen, we have a centralized device object, typically a device object that exists in all the three entities and it is connected. Right now, if I talk about the first statement itself, this is something which makes a lot more sense. That means centrally enforced through the cloud. That means any policy that you will create either on Azure AD, that means conditional access, any device compliance or device configuration, or any policy when it comes to Windows Defender for Endpoints. It's a device object which is centrally managed from a cloud native solution and any changes that you are applying is reaching that particular device altogether. The next thing is obviously as I've stated before which is moreover related to device configuration and the last one is endpoint security and risk posture. Now let's talk about the other rule which is the platform as well as the apps that run on the device are securely provisioned properly configured and kept up to the date now what does this technically mean that since we know that vulnerability that exists in an enterprise is inversely proportional to security right now here comes the capability of windows defender for endpoints which can actually let you know about the vulnerability management part itself now TVM and ASR. These are the only two specific key areas that I have mentioned, though Windows Defender for Endpoints is very deep and there will be a dedicated playlist for that as well. But as of now, just make sure you understand this concept in terms of protecting everything. When we talk about endpoints, make sure there should be almost no vulnerabilities that exist in your enterprise. I know that it's exceptionally hard but yes you have to make sure that you have the right practices to make sure there is no vulnerability now a lot of part when it comes to vulnerability exists on the security patching part itself so this is something with which microsoft endpoint manager can help you to make sure all the regular updates are reaching the dedicated endpoints or pcs right the next thing is Make sure the access control system ensures that all the policy controls are in place before any data is accessed. Now, this is very simple and it typically means that you have to make sure that you are only allowing access on those devices which are trusted by Azure AD. Right now, if I talk about the last one, which is more relatable, that means making sure that the access is getting blocked on a compromised endpoint or a device. Now, what does this mean? See, we know that you can onboard Windows, Mac machines to Microsoft Defender for endpoints, but lately uh, the support has also been expanded to iOS and Android, right? So what you have to make sure that whenever any device is being flagged with high risk, there should be a compliance policy in Endpoint Manager that can mark that device as a non-compliant device. And the moment the device is marked as a non-compliant device, the access should be blocked. Now, this is something which should be in place to make sure whenever a compromised device is detected, any user who is trying to access any application on that particular device or any resource on that particular device, that should be blocked. Okay. Now let's talk about the best security practices that should exist in every enterprise to make sure that all the endpoints are protected. Okay, so if I talk about the first one, it's the same wherein you have to make sure all the endpoints are registered with the cloud identity provider and the other solutions so that you can have a centralized identity and make sure on all the untrusted device 
the access should be blocked. The next one is access should only be granted on the trusted devices. Also device configuration, device compliance policies are defined for all the platforms. Now, it can be a scenario wherein a device is not compliant. So you have to make sure that you notify the user before retiring the device or before removing the device or before even blocking the access on that particular device. So make sure you have notification settings enabled in Endpoint Manager portal itself that can let the user know that see your device is not compliant and it has to be fixed. Now either they can run a manual sync or they can contact the IT team altogether. For all the Windows endpoints, make sure you have Windows head of a business. This just adds more security from an identity layer perspective itself. From an endpoint security perspective, make sure all the endpoints are onboarded to Defender ATP, antivirus, anti-spyware, must be implemented. All the Defender endpoints should have anti-malware policies assigned and risk score is the most important part that has to be implemented because that is something which is going to change the state of the device. That means if there is any device which has a high risk, it has to be a non-compliant device altogether. Then if there are devices who are non-compliant for a longer period of time. The default value is 15 days, but make sure you retire the non-compliant device within five days. Block installation of untrusted application and MSI packages on the devices itself at the user layer, not at the admin, okay? And make sure all the systems are patched. You can use endpoint manager service to make sure that Intune itself, the cloud native service itself, pushes the updates on your devices, whether they are even connecting on your on-prem network or not. So this is something which is also, I have covered in a lot more detail in our previous video, okay? The last thing that you have to make sure that typical DLP policies should exist. Now, from a Windows perspective, endpoint DLP already exists. That makes sure that any malicious content should not be either uploaded or downloaded on a device altogether or any confidential information should not be shared. But from an untrusted device perspective, what you can have is MCAS session control policies to make sure that on an untrusted device, no information is getting leaked. Okay, now this is typically more driven towards data, but this is something which also falls under the scope of endpoint itself, where you are making sure that you are checking the device identity of a device or an endpoint and not allowing the access. Last but not the least uh, important is route all the traffic to your SIM. Now, in case of Microsoft, when we talk about cloud native SIM and SOAR solution, it can be Azure Sentinel, but you can you have your own SIM solution which can make intelligent correlation and let you know about the anomalies, okay? Now let's talk about the last part, which is sort of summary from challenges to solutions, right? So we have both the kind of devices, which is BYOD devices or mobile devices and managed domain joint PCs. And what we have to make sure that we are managing the risk, health and compliance on all these kind of devices and provide a secure PC that can make sure that the identity is protected, the data is protected and at the end the endpoint is protected itself. And if there is something going wrong, you can actually recover from that particular uh, threat or that particular malicious content which exists on a device. Okay. So the first aspect is to make sure that you have cross-platform management in place, which for sure Endpoint Manager offers, making sure that you have right set of device compliance and configuration policies. And then the most important one, which is moreover related to the EDR capabilities or Endpoint Protection capabilities itself, wherein you are making sure that if there is any threat or any new malicious content, which is getting downloaded on a specific device, or if any specific device is compromised. The same intelligence can be used across the enterprise to check that if there is any other device which is matching with the same thread that exists on my current device or not. Now, this is a very slow transition from challenges to solutions, but it can be achieved provided you have the right set of security practices in place. 
and the three solutions from Microsoft which work in conjunction. The first one is Azure Ready, which can have a decision making process in place. Then you have Endpoint Manager Portal, which can help you with the device compliance or device configuration. And the last, the most important one, which is Windows Defender for Endpoints. So let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video. We have discussed about Microsoft Zero Trust security for endpoints, top security practices that you have to follow without fail and in the next video I'm going to talk about Microsoft Zero Trust for applications. Now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.